for decades, HIV has been, well, one of medicine's toughest fights, hasn't it? Millions tied to taking pills every single day. But that picture, that future, it might be changing. Something that honestly felt like science fiction feels like it's almost here. We're talking about a really remarkable development. Mm -hmm. Something that could, you know, redefine how we fight HIV. Moving beyond just managing it to maybe actually a cure. This huge news, it actually came out of the International AIDS Society Conference back in 2025. Uh, really shining a light on American Gene Technologies, AGT, right? And their specific program, AGT-103T, is causing a real stir, sparking hope among researchers, doctors, activists, everyone. Okay, let's unpack this. What makes this feel so different after such a long road? Yeah, you've really put your finger on it. The road has been incredibly long, tough. I mean, for over 40 years, HIV has been this immense medical challenge. And sure, treatments have gotten so much better. People are living longer, healthier lives, which is fantastic. But a real permanent cure that always felt like, well, like a distant dream. Almost impossible. But you're right, this time it does feel different, significantly different. What came out of that conference, it really suggests we might be at a genuine turning point. It's generating this deep, uh, renewed optimism, something we haven't really felt in this field for quite a while. What's fascinating here is we're looking beyond just, you know, keeping the virus down. That's the key thing, isn't it? We hear about new drugs all the time that help manage HIV. But this AGT-103T, it sounds like it's playing a whole different ballgame. Yeah. So what is it exactly at its core? And what makes its approach so, well, revolutionary? It really is a whole new way of thinking, a paradigm shift, you could say. It's not like the daily pills, the antiretrovirals, or RRT, which just suppress the virus. AGT-103T is a gene and cell therapy, which is, you know, cutting edge stuff. Think of it less like a drug and more like a a living treatment. What happens is scientists take a patient's own immune cells, specifically their T cells, the ones that should be fighting infections. And in a super specialized lab, they effectively upgrade these cells using advanced genetic engineering, give them new instructions. Then these enhanced cells, they're put back into the patient's body. The idea is to give the immune system a permanent boost, make it smarter, stronger, specifically trained to hunt down and actually eliminate HIV, not just hold it back. Wow. So it's not just a shield. It's like like yeah. training your body's own army, yeah. making it smarter, specialized, teaching it to find and destroy the enemy hiding inside. That's wow. sort of, yeah, that's a powerful idea, a revolutionary one. And the first results from the initial trial, I hear they were pretty amazing. Small trial, big results. They really were truly exceptional. And that's why there's all this excitement, this buzz. It was a small group, just five patients initially. A phase one trial, so mostly about safety. But what they saw was pretty startling. All five patients, they showed a significant drop in what we call the hidden HIV reservoirs. Now, if we connect this to the bigger picture, these reservoirs, they're the absolute number one reason why curing HIV has been so incredibly difficult. For decades, they've been the major hurdle. Essentially, they're dormant HIV copies tucked away inside the body's cells. Standard treatments, AirAJT, they just can't see them, can't touch them. These sneaky viruses can just sit there for years. And the minute someone stops their daily meds, boom. The reservoirs wake up, the virus comes roaring back. That's why it's been so hard to cure. You suppress the active virus, sure, but you can't clear out these hidden copies. But here's the really stunning part from that trial. In one of those five patients, those hidden reservoirs became completely undetectable. And they stayed undetectable for more than two years. You have to understand, for years, decades even, getting rid of these reservoirs seemed impossible. The main barrier. So to see them not just reduced, but gone undetectable in someone for that long, that's, mm -hmm. well, that's not just progress. It feels like a revolutionary leap, a potential functional cure in action. It suggests those modified cells are really doing their job finding and destroying those hidden threats. The implications are just huge. You know, we talk about the science, the data, it's easy to get lost in that. But let's just pause for a second. Think about what this means for someone living with HIV. Imagine someone, let's call him David. He's, say, 34, a teacher, lives in California, diagnosed back when he was 26. And ever since then, every morning, like clockwork, coffee in one hand, pills in the other, antiretrovirals. He can't miss a day, not one, because he knows the virus could just bounce right back. So for David, HIV isn't just, you know, a diagnosis on a chart. It's this constant shadow, maybe quiet, but always there, planning a holiday, got to pack the pills, enough for the whole trip. What about time zones? Storing them right, relationships. That brings its own complications, right? Disclosure, stigma, it's still out there. And even though the meds let him live a long life, just the thought of being tied to them forever, it's exhausting. It's a constant reminder. Now, imagine David hearing this news about HET-103T, a single treatment. That might mean no more daily pills, ever. 
a therapy that could actually wipe out those hidden reservoirs, the very reason he has to take those pills every day. For David, for millions of people like him, this isn't just cool science. It's exegia. It's freedom. It's dignity. It's maybe getting a second shot at a life without that daily weight. That's the real human story here, isn't it? Absolutely. That human angle is so vital. It really drives home the potential global impact. But there's always a but with these big breakthroughs, especially in gene therapy. This brings up the unavoidable question, the cost. These therapies, gene and cell therapies, they are incredibly complex to develop, to manufacture, to actually administer. They don't come cheap. Not at all. We're seeing similar treatments in the U.S. for other diseases. They can run between, what, $2 million, maybe even $4 million dollars? Mm for one treatment and the very early ballpark figures for AGT103T they suggest it might land somewhere in that same range 2 to 4 million for a one time shot wow okay yeah it's it's a number that definitely makes you stop and think astronomical really makes you wonder who could possibly afford that but maybe we should you know challenge that initial sticker shock a bit let's compare it compare it to what people like David are already paying year after year for their whole lives Right now, that lifelong RT, the daily pills, in the U.S. it's typically costing, what, $10,000, $15,000 a year? Maybe more. And over a lifetime, factor in inflation, other medical costs, side effects, that easily climbs into the millions anyway. And here's the absolute crucial difference, the thing we have to remember. RT never gets rid of the virus. It just keeps it suppressed. It's a constant battle, day in, day out. Stop taking it for even a little while, and HIV roars back, often stronger. But... If ADT-103T actually works like they hope, potentially you'd take it once, just once, and you could be free from daily pills forever. So when you look at it that way, the total cost of lifelong RT versus a one-time fix, suddenly even a price tag of two to four million, it might actually end up being cheaper in the long run. It's an investment in a cure not just management. That's a totally different value proposition. That cost comparison is definitely important, a necessary perspective, but you know, the price tag isn't the only hurdle here. We also have to talk about accessibility. Plain and simple access. This isn't like picking up a prescription at Walgreens or Boots. It needs really specialized labs, high-tech hospitals. You need the facilities to safely take out the patient cells, modify them genetically, and then put them back in. So what that means realistically, at least at the start, AGT-103T will probably only be available in big cities, you know, places with advanced medical centers, wealthier countries most likely, those that can support this kind of complex infrastructure. But history does give us some hope here. We've seen this before with big medical advances. When the technology scales up, when more places can do it, when production gets more efficient, costs tend to fall, access gets better, what starts out rare and incredibly expensive can eventually become more routine, more widely available. Just think about how crazy expensive the very first HIV drugs were back in the 90s. Almost completely out of reach for most people. But look now. Global efforts, generic versions, economies of scale, the cost and access have changed dramatically. So if we see real commitment from governments, NGOs, global health groups stepping in to help, then maybe, eventually, agt 103 t could reach smaller towns, maybe even lower-income countries eventually, bringing this hope to millions more. Collaboration is going to be absolutely key. That's a really important point about how progress can spread. So... Okay, where do things stand right now? What's the immediate future look like? AGT has said they're planning bigger trials starting in 2026, right? These next steps, phase two, phase three trials. They'll be looking much more closely at safety, obviously, but really digging into effectiveness in a lot more people. And if those trials go well and, you know, fingers crossed they do this therapy, it could actually be on the market in just a few years. It's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. For more than 40 years, HIV has meant fear, stigma hardship all over the world. Even with the best treatments we have now, it still means a lifetime of medication, managing chronic illness. Now, though, for the very first time, we're not just talking about helping people live longer with HIV. We're seriously talking about freedom from the virus itself. And for people like David, for millions out there living with this every single day, that could mean so much more than just medicine. It could mean, like we said, freedom. Freedom to dream bigger, maybe. To love without that fear. Just to live without that constant daily reminder. It really does feel like history unfolding. And as we've touched on, it brings up these really complex questions that go beyond just the science. So here's something I'd love to leave you, our listener, thinking about as this all develops. If AGT-103T does make it to market and it has that kind of multi-million dollar price tag, what should happen? Should government step in and subsidize it, make sure every single patient, rich or poor, can get access to this potential cure? Or should it, at least initially, just be available for those who can afford it privately? Your thoughts on this really matter, because these kinds of conversations, this public discussion, it genuinely shapes how healthcare policy gets made, how access works for everyone. The science story isn't over yet, not by a long shot. 
But it's clear science is rewriting the story of HIV. And we're all here watching it happen together. 